Now let's start with section C. So here we would be discussing more five questions till 30th question. So in this, the first question is you have to give a chemical test to distinguish between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. So in this case, you can make use of bromine water. So you have to take two test tubes, put saturated hydrocarbon at it and in another put an unsaturated hydrocarbon and add bromine water to it. Now, the one which discharges the color of bromine water is that of an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Unsaturated hydrocarbon always discharges the color of bromine water and the saturated ones never do that. So this is the distinguish between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. The second one, name the products formed when ethane burns in air. Write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction showing the types of energies liberated. So in this case, on burning ethane in air, that means C2H6 when react with oxygen, they always form carbon dioxide, water, heat and light. These are the four end products. And then you have to balance that chemical equation using chapter 1, balancing the chemical equation. Then in the C part, we have why is reaction between methane and chlorine in the presence of sunlight considered as substitution reaction. So as you know that in methane, we have CH4 and one H is replaced by the chlorine atom. So therefore, it is known as substitution reaction. So here I have answer for all. You can check it out and note down it if you want to. So this is what you can write in A part, B part and C part respectively. Now moving on to the next question. It says dry HCl gas does not change the color of dry blue litmus paper. So it is because uh, the dry HCl gas never produce H plus ions. So therefore you can write that the color of litmus paper does not change. It should have H plus ions to, to see the change in the color of litmus paper. If there is no H plus ion then no change. B part antacid tablets are used by persons suffering from stomach pain. So here you can write that as antacid tablets are made up of magnesium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide they are actually mild bases so they react chemically with hydrochloric present in our body and neutralizes the effect c part toothpaste is used for cleaning teeth so as you know toothpaste contain base some substances that are basic in nature and in our mouth we have some acid so it neutralizes the acid present in our mouth and cleans, cleans your teeth. So therefore, it is the best way to avoid cavities and you can write, that's all you can write in this question. So you can note down the answers if you want to. This is the answer for all three parts. You can stop the video and note down the answers. In question number 26, we have translate the following statements into chemical equation and then balance them. So first of all, you have to write the skeletal equation. Then you have to balance the equation. So in this case, first is hydrogen gas combines with nitrogen gas to form ammonia gas. So first of all, you have to write the skeletal equation here. So the skeletal equation will look like hydrogen, nitrogen and NH3 in the last ammonia. Now you have to balance this equation. Balance equation look like 3H2 plus N2 gives us 2NH3. This is the balance equation. In the second one, you have hydrogen sulfide gas that burns in air to give water and sulfur dioxide gas. Here you are given with all the reactants and products. You just have to frame the equation and then you have to balance the equation. So in the second part, we have H2S that is hydrogen sulfide plus burns in air. That means you have to add oxygen to the reactants part 
and then we get water that is H2O and the sulfur dioxide gas SO2. Then you have to balance the equation. So when you balance, you can see the answer on your screen. It's 2H2S plus 3O2 plus gives us 2H2O, then sulfur dioxide 2. In the C part, we have barium chloride reacts with sulf aluminum sulfate. Then it says to give aluminum chloride and then you need know to know and then a precipitate of barium sulfate. So here we have all the solution. Now again you have to balance this equation. So this question takes more time. You have to give more time to these types of question to balance them correctly and to fetch marks here. In D part you have potassium metal react with water to give potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So you can see first one is potassium, then water, then KOH potassium hydroxide, then H2. Then you have to balance this again. In the last one, we have zinc reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to give us zinc sulfate solution and hydrogen. So you have to add all that and then when you write the skeletal equation you can see that all are the all the elements are actually balanced so you don't need to write any other equation after the question number 27 so in this case you have to mark you have to draw a neat diagram of an excretory unit of a human kidney and label the following parts so you have to mark these four see these four parts of the following diagram and here you have to draw the nephron in which we have Bowman's capsule, renal artery and glomerulus and collecting dot. So you have to mark all these four parts and then let me show you how to draw that. This is the diagram you have to draw for x 3 unit and you have to mark all the following parts in the side we have collecting duct in above we have bowman's capsule in the starting then we have a renal artery in the starting and we have small particles in it known as glomerulus then you have to write give one advantage of having a large number of these highly coiled structures in our kidney so you have to write the advantage of having these highly coiled structures in our kidney. So you can write one point only in this as we have five marks for A, B, C. So in A part, it will be actually of three marks and the B part is of one mark. And in this, you can write that this helps in increasing the surface area for filtration and proper reabsorption of useful substances. So this is all for B part. In C part, you have to write mention any two substances which are selectively reabsorbed as the filtrate flows along the tubular part of the of this unit. So here we have glucose. Either you can write glucose, ammonia acid, salt, and water. So these are the things we have in that part. Uh, then moving on to question number 28. It says differentiate between pollen grain and ovule. So first of all, you have to differentiate between pollen grain and ovule. So in this reference, you can write that the pollen grain is a male reproductive part, whereas ovule is a female reproductive structure. And pollen grain is a structure contained in the pollen sac. Ovule is the structure contained in the ovary. Or in the third point, or if you want to write two points only, it's good. So in the third point, if you want to write, you can write inside the pollen grains. The male gamete is present inside the ovule. Embryo sac containing the female gamete is present. So that's the difference between pollen grain and ovule. Then you have to state the state brief function of the following parts the first one is ovary so ovary in, it is present in hu female part 
and it produces ova or eggs you can write and ovary also secretes estrogen or oestrogen which helps in the development of sex secondary sexual characters and the next one is fallopian tube the next one is fallopian tube so fallopian tube conveys the egg from the ovary to the uterus and provides the appropriate environment for its fertilization then uterus in uterus we have embryo embryo that develops in your in uterus in your female part so you can note down the answers if you want to pollen grains difference between pollen grain and ovule and then we have b part all the functions of ovary fallopian tube and then uterus so this is the difference this is the function of ovary fallopian tube and uterus then moving on to the next part where we have to differentiate germi germination and fertilization so in fertilization we have fusion of male and female gamete in germination in germination is when the food reserves food reserves present in a seed are broken down and the embryo starts to grow and fertilization occurs in plants and animals whereas germination occur in seed plant and fertilization occur only after pollination in uh, in fruits or you can write in plants uh, whereas in germination it begins when a seed starts to absorb water so that's the difference between germination and fertilization in the b part you have to state the functions of scrotum testes and then vas deferens you can either choose this portion or the previous one we did in this we have scrotum so scrotum actually contains and supports the testes in human body in male human body and then it is situated outside the body cavity and allows sperm to develop to at the optimum temperature so this is the function of scrotum then for testes the formation of male germ cells or sperms take place in it testes then third part vas deferens it ascends into the abdomen passes over the urinary bladder and receives duct from the seminal vesicles vesicles behind the urinary bladder to form ejaculatory ejaculatory duct for 29 so it says a current of 1 ampere flows in a series circuit containing an electric lamp and a conductor of 5 ohm when connected to a 10 volt battery calculate the resistance of the electric lamp now you have to find the resistance of the electric lamp so in this case you should have for r unit v and i so in this case the v is unknown to us like v across electric lamp is unknown to us so in this case first of all we need to find v the potential difference across the lamp so according to this question we have 10 volt battery so it will be 10 minus 1 into 5 where 1 and 5 came from so 1 in this case is the current and 5 is in this case is a conductor so it will be i into v which gives us sorry i into r which gives us v now 10 minus 5 is 5 volt this is the potential difference across the lamp now we need to find resistance of the electric lamp resistance will be v over i v in this case is across lamp is 5 and i in this case is 1 which is now 5 5 ohm now that means lamp resistance is 5 ohm now we have to see the second part it says now if a resistance of 10 ohm is connected in parallel with this series combination what change in current flowing through 5 ohm conductor and potential difference across the lamp will take place now we have to add 10 ohm resistance 
that is parallel to this circuit you can see the diagram here now we have a 5 ohm resistance which is given earlier and we have a lamp of 5 ohm and in parallel we have a 10 ohm resistance now now we have to find the equivalent resistance of the series combination of 5 ohm and 5 ohm so when you add these two it will be 10 ohm now 10 ohm and 10 ohm is parallel to each other now you have to find the parallel combination of 10 ohm 10 ohm so 10 ohm and 10 ohm will give you 5 ohm in total now we have to find the current and we have to find we basically have to find current here and we have to tell them what will be the potential difference will it be same or will it be a different so current we have to find so current across this will be the total resistance of this two will be 10 ohm and 10 ohm over 5 5 volt it will be 2 ampere that means current in the circuit is 2 ampere and what do you think there would be a potential difference here so there won't be any potential difference difference in potential difference basically means that there won't be any change in the potential difference if if across the lamp because there won't be any change in the potential across this lamp due to this 10 ohm resistance so that's all for question number 29 so first I'm repeating this question so first of all you have to find the potential difference across the lamp that will be the 10 is the total one and then you have to remove I into R so that is 1 into 5 so 5 volt across the lamp then you have to find resistance resistance is V over I V in this case is 5 and I in this case is 1 so 5 ampere then we have to add a resistance of 10 ohm that should be connected in parallel so in parallel we have added 10 ohm resistance so in the next step you have to find the equivalent resistance for this hole so first of all you would be adding these two because they are in series so 5 plus 5 is 10 then 10 ohm over 10 ohm that means they are in parallel 10 ohm and 10 ohm are in parallel so you have to add them so when you add them you get your answer as 5 ohm this is 5 so we need to find current in the circuit now in circuit we have 10 volt and 5 ohm is the resistance then when you solve this you get 2 ampere now current in 5 ohm resistance because the current will be distributed equally 1 ampere in this one one ampere in this one and one ampere downwards so there won't be any flow no change in current flowing through 5 ampere and there won't be any change in potential difference as well So this is the type given in the C part and we have to state the type of the mirror M and one characteristic property of the image Q. So in B part first of all I will show you how to make ray diagram to show the principal focus of a concave mirror and convex mirror. So this is how you draw for concave mirror in the first diagram and in the second diagram you have to show this diagram now for the C part we have to state the type of mirror according to the question given we have to state the type of mirror and we have to tell the characteristic property of the image here so you can see the mirror is concave mirror here because the image is at the image is behind the mirror so you can write it is concave mirror and image formed will be virtual and erect because they are in same direction so that's all for 
question number 30. So that's the end for our first sample paper. I will continue with second sample paper. As soon as I, I get that and I need to make the some 